Tony Talks. Welcome to Tony Talks. Welcome this to is Tony Antonio Talks. Moore coming to you from Tony Talks. I want to have a discussion today about Boycott Woman King. I did a show last Thursday. Since then, uh, the rap, uh, LA Times, Madame Noir, your web, all across the internet, people have picked up my show and that discussion and some of you guys' tweets anchoring this discussion. It's interesting because I don't think they know how big this is. They think it's just a movie and really it's a movement. They think this is about blackness when really it's about lineage. I'll say it again. I believe Woman King is the most disrespectful or among the most disrespectful movies to black Americans, to American descendants of slavery in 40 to 50 years. Um, more and more facts have come out and what it appears to have been done is they just totally like just changed the reality of who the homie were to make this happen. Um, we'll talk about the specifics. We'll get into the details, but there are people leaving the theater today, people leaving the theater celebrating, saying that I learned something. You can't learn something from fiction. Let me say that. Let's say that again. You can't learn nothing from fiction. Not nothing but some fantasy Hobbit stuff. Oh my God. Elves and, and rings. But when you're messing with the Dahomey, you're messing with the truth behind why our people were enslaved. Mine and yours watching today. So they recreated Dahomey as emancipators. We'll get into the details. They left out the reality of yeah when you switch to palm oil you you basically just use slaves so you're just a slaver it's the same as selling the slaves but they leave that out you know why because they're anchored in your understanding of emancipation our understanding because this is made for american market you can say what you want to say the international dollars are just extra domestic american market our understanding of emancipation is in context of the Emancipation Proclamation. It's in context of being free when they say we freed the slaves. Well, when they freed the slaves, they just stayed slaves under Nanasika in this movie's context, making palm oil. Making palm oil. I need everybody to understand that this is a problem. You're going to have to do some work, though. If you got a friend, an auntie, a mama, a sister, a brother that watched this movie and you explain that this was a movie that totally is disrespectful to your lineage and they don't care, you got to question that relationship. That's how deep this go. We in a time where interest rates have houses at 6%. We in a time where people losing their jobs. We ain't got time for you to have somebody around you that don't understand anchor that ain't ready to be a soldier next to you. And they telling you the truth when they say, I wanna watch a movie about the people that traded your family into slavery. But not just that, but a movie that then makes them into the Harriet the homie. Can we talk? I got a lot of things to get through, so let me just go on and get through it. Please subscribe, donate, share, subscribe to the show. Um, Tonetalks.org to donate. Uh, press the like. Press the uh, press the bell. 310-388-3499 to call in. We're going to have call-ins at some point. But I got to get rolling because I got a lot of teaching to do and a lot of discussion to have. So the rap covered it. And you got to understand how big this is. I want to make sure I contextualize it. For those people that don't know, I was nominated for an Emmy for a documentary on the Iran-Contra and Freeway Rick and the crack cocaine scandal. The equivalent, some people are, I mean, it's just like incoherent inference skills, comprehension skills being shown on the internet by money, many, many, many black people. One of the things that happens when you go to law school, not even become a lawyer, is that you have to do inference uh, games in the LSAT, if dance. There makes It makes no sense to draw a parallel between paid in full and this movie. This is a movie about people that beheaded your family, your ancestors sacrifice them i'll show you don't worry this is not a movie about people who freed your ancestors because they was next to the tribe that did it and if you watched it and you're confused about that that's your fault 
took your kids to see that you don't know that all right here's why some of the black community is driving boycott woman king hashtag boycott woman king on social media i told you when i first tw uh did the show last thursday that nobody was using that the hashtag but i was about to ignite that ados from that people felt like there was a safe haven to have this discussion that was necessary a safe haven to ask the question what does it mean to be black if they don't consider themselves black when they in africa there is no context for blackness as the woman said from kenya in the uh city lab article because there everybody's black what does it mean to be african if africa ain't a country it's a continent with 52 countries that are really 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 separated he can't drive between the countries like you drive between Vegas and California. It looked the same. What does it mean to be Ados if you're going to go watch a movie about the Dahomey that enslaved, beheaded, sold your family into the ocean? It means you ain't got a lot of self-respect. It means your anchoring is clearly in gender, maybe career. A lot of these people are actresses first. Adolf second. They're females first, they're Adolf second. They're males first, they're Adolf second. There's no place in this America for you to be Adolf second. Your entire anchoring should tell you to your bones something was wrong. I need you to see it. Let's so when the rap covers it, let me contextualize this. That's why I talked about my personal background levels to this the rap gets advertising from sony it's not in their interest to put this up so for this to go up it means that we really was pushing the line i want you to see hear this right now not a dollar was spent on advertising hashtag boycott woman king this is not black lives matter there is no uh secondary uh, a conspiracy of people that I created this. Ados created this. Not a dollar was spent to advertise Boycott and Woman King. From that, the rap had to deal with it because of you, my viewer. Because of your, your growth, commend you, in understanding your lineage and not allowing yourself to be disrespected. Can we talk? Can we get to it? I think a lot of people don't seem to get it. You had this whole argument coming out when they tried to scramble the message that this was about Massage Noir. I'm going to tell you right now, roughly speaking, this boycott is being driven by black women. Talk about it. It is black women that are driving Boycott Woman King. Tell them that they feminine, uh, that they're against females um, in stories and everything. How about that? The brothers are there too. But this is about lineage. It is about us coming together and saying no to Hollywood, saying no to Viola Davis, to saying no to the young woman who directed uh, Love and Basketball. I don't know how directing Love and Basketball is a resume builder to making this epic film she said that this is the truth they got her running around talking about this is the truth and we'll go through her specific quotes so we don't get it wrong but you didn't write the screenplay how is somebody who did not write the story now trying to tell us that the story is the truth nastiness we're here for a discussion about our lineage who's driving the boycott woman king trend on social media and protests on of the viola davis uh starring historical epic that hit theaters today perhaps surprisingly it's not the same people who dropped racist memes in reaction to the first look at holly bailey and disney's live action the little mermaid tra trailer critics don't have an issue with davis playing a strong black leader in the woman king but are alarmed by the story of the dahomey tribe who sold other africans let's pause for a second they didn't just sell other africans they sold our families with me they have messed with the wrong person they didn't expect me and i'm here now and i'm a problem 
they didn't sell other Africans. They sold families that are in, here in America, that are that are all across the Caribbean. This is awful. This is patently disrespectful. I don't know what y'all going to do with these people in your lives that have watched this movie and come home talking about costumes. They don't understand like lineage and ancestry, which means they have no anchoring and you might as well forget all the family connections and all that. They don't know. They don't, they're just kind of here. They're empty vessels, vacuous. Critics don't have an issue with Davis playing a strong leader in the woman king, but are alarmed by the history of the Dahomey tribe who sold other Africans into slavery has been whitewashed. Time to boycott the woman king the film about the Dahomey and Benin that traded slaves into the transatlantic. This may be the most offensive film to black Americans in 40 to 50 years, wrote Los Angeles attorney and producer Antonio Moore. That is where they had to source all the material from. Put up in a bow. Understand, you, you, I'm going to tell you straight, this is a sacrifice for me. I got to be the face of what your civic organizations are supposed to be the face of, your NAACP. I got to be the face of what your academics are supposed to be the face of. I got to be the face of what Nicole Hannah-Jones is supposed to be the face of. You wrote the 1619, where you at? This is the moment where you say no. See, it's easy to point at a, somebody with a white hood on. This the hard work. This the mud. Can we talk about it? I believe I agree, Amala. This movie should be removed from theaters. It is that disrespectful and that inaccurate. No group would allow itself to be so disrespected in context of not just it being shown, but then it being shown in such an inaccurate light and just be clapping when they, you know, not you guys, but the clapping like that. I learned a lot. And it was beautiful. What are you talking about? What the woman king gets wrong and right about the homie warriors. The woman king simplifies the homie's complicated history by transforming it into an anti-slavery kingdom. In doing so, it misses a critical historical reality by focusing on the story of the homie's female soldiers as African liberators. The homie rulers never opposed the Atlantic slave trade. They were deeply engaged in waging wars and selling their enemies into slavery. Boycott Woman King. I told y'all my, my black females are, are leading this. Thank you so much, Miss Ford. So please don't come into my discussion talking about misogyny aware, because that's not what this is. This is a lineal discussion that you might not understand because you are not anchored in lineage, and that's why you watch this movie. You are not anchored if you're not anchored in lineage. Oh, I forgot that part. From the New Yorker magazine, listen to this. This is a synopsis so you can kind of understand what they did with this movie. The Empire's leader, this is in the movie, Oba Adi and his turbaned baddies have seized the kingdom's ports, Awada, and aligned themselves with malevolent Western slave traders. Gazo too sells enemy prisoners, but only because he must, of course, with heavy hearted Jeffersonian reluctance. Nanasika, that's the character played by Viola Davis, lobbies against the trade, especially once she begins having ominous nightmares about a buried sexual trauma. I want you guys to understand, these people had slaves for hundreds of years and I'll share with you in a second from the Smithsonian an actual an actual historical record about Nana Sika where she beheads a man. She beheads a, a man taken out of a basket, a slave, and then licks the sword. They took that woman and made her into Harriet Tubman. And your friends, your mama, your sister that went to this are clapping afterwards with no idea what the hell they're talking about. This ain't a costume kind of movie. This ain't cosplay. If you are not historically accurate, you shouldn't even make this movie. 
people are saying, well, it's not a documentary. No, it has to actually still be accurate. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It has to actually be accurate. Yeah, it can't show a not a seeker that beheaded a man as a freedom fighter. If if for that reason alone, it should be taken out of theaters. I want you to understand. I'm gonna read it to you so you can see. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna play. Please, please, please support this channel, tonetalks.org, to support. Western slave traffickers gaze on two self enemy prisoners, but only because he must, of course, with heavy hearted Jeffersonian reluctance. Nanasika, the Viola's character, lobbies against the trade, especially once she begins having ominous nightmares about a very sexual trauma. The stage is set for a moral showdown. There was no morality, no more than you selling your stove. These slaves were for the purpose of sacrifice, sex, sale, and making palm oil. They were not seen as people. The stage is set for a moral showdown. Will Gazo cave to cowardly pragmatism or embrace the abolitionist, abolitionist awakening of the goji? That word is going to come up later. Harriet Dahoney. Thank you so much, Darian. Somebody said that they prayed she regret. You remember she regretted making uh the help. She can't. I, I apologize. I didn't know. We gonna make her regret it. We gonna make her come out and tell us why didn't you kick cast as Harriet Tubman so we could support you? If nobody in Hollywood should have played Harriet Tubman, it was Viola Davis. But you playing this character, not a seeker. Nanasika was a teenager. Why are Revo not playing uh, Nanasika and Viola playing Harriet Tubman if Nanasika was a teenager? Muddle causes as the homies' struggle for independence unpersuasively evolved into a proto-pan African struggle for abolition. None of this happened. These people are clapping, talking about how powerful the movie is, and none of that is is real. It didn't even, it's, it's just all fraudulent. Much of the problem stems from the film's disingenuous effort to differentiate the warring parties. So what they do is they, in the movie, for y'all people that have friends and family watching this nonsense, is they set it up like it ain't the Dahomey that are at the port selling the slaves, it's the Oyo. So that's why they walking out like, like thinking that, oh, it was so good. That's according to New Yorker at least. Much of the problem stems from the film's disingenuous effort to differentiate the warring parties while signaling fidelity to the historical record. Allusions are made to the, the home allusions are made to the Dahomey's participation in the slave trade, but we only oversee the Oyas. I understand that these people, their whole lives were slaves. They beheaded slaves in the morning, they had them on the walls, the heads. And we're hearing that they just showed them as regular people that didn't have slaves around. And you wonder why these people, these, these people uh, watching this movie walk out of there, damn they're crazed, not even understanding what the hell they're talking about. Allusions are made to the homies participating in the slave trade, but we only see the oils, which we know is much worse, largely because of Jimmy Okudio's beard wickedness. Conveniently, the slave port of Ouida, which the homie controlled, the homie controlled from 1727 to 1892 is under oil rule, conveniently. So the slave port is under oil, not the homie, when it actually was under the homie rule. There, Ade conducts sinister negotiations with Europeans and even puts a goji on the auction block. So they get put on the auction block to the, 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 the women's. So he grabbing them and putting them on the auction blocks, the women warriors. Burn their whole trade there, T H E R, trade to the ground, says Nanasika proclaims during a battle at the port. They made them into you. That's why your sister is confused. Your homegirl, your boyfriend, your pastor, your daddy that went to see this, they made them into you. 
So a woman who beheaded your ancestor has now taken your oppression and sold it back to you with a bag of popcorn. Can we talk about it? And they trying to tell us that this is okay. The people that have watched this have entered a state of craze that is unacceptable. And it is this woman, this white woman, who made this movie. It's her. She, she says, I came up with this. And her language is what's showing up. That's what the director is rep repeating when she say Braveheart. This came from her. She said it right here. This is in the Hollywood Reporter. She says, uh, Woman King was definitely born of my love of the continent in general. It's based on women's history, women's history, not uh, ADOS and other DOS's black history, but women's history. A story I found, me I found many years ago of this army of women in the 17th century, I was watching Braveheart and was like, why isn't there a woman's movie? Now you have the director of the movie repeating that Braveheart line. Who you think she got it from? She, the, the woman does it. She says, I was watching. So she just repeating the talking points from her. Can y'all see it? They got, they done messed with the wrong one. You should have told him. North, why you wouldn't tell him? Princess, you should have told him. You should have dialed in, told the director, Tone come, come. You might not want to put this out. Maybe Tone, Viola. Tone talks is not a not. You might want to do what Lupita do, did and drop out. I want you to hear this about Nana Sika, the character played by Viola. Abomi, this is a this is from the Smithsonian. Smithsonian Magazine, I believe. Abomi in December 1889 watched as a teenage recruit, a girl named Nanasika, who had not yet killed anyone, was tested, brought before a young prisoner who sat bound in a basket. She walked jauntily. Go look up the word jauntily. Quickly, she walked up with that power. She wasn't timid. She walked up jauntily up to, swung her sword three times with both hands. That meant she meant it. Then calmly cut the last flesh that attached the head to the trunk. She then squeezed the blood off her weapon and swallowed it. Hmm. This boycott is for that unnamed prisoner, Nanasika, horrendously murdered. Hashtag boycott woman king, hashtag woman king. The detailed record by the Smithsonian literally brought me to tears after reading. Now, I want everybody to understand part of the hustle that they played on ADOS is they blame us for our own victimization, and then we don't know where we come from. So as a result, how you know it was the Dahomey? Wrong one, wrong time. This is my personal connection to Boycott and Woman King. 30% Benin. I want you to see my ancestry. 31% Benin Togo. Ethnicity, Antonio Moore. They have made us people that have no background. So then we can't make no complaint. 30%. Many we are talking with do not understand the gravity of the discussion or the context of lineal anchoring. We are talking about mass atrocities among the worst in the history of mankind, largely erased in this film. Look at Nanasika. This is just one account of her beheading this person. But over here, in the actual movie, she a freedom fighter. Burn their whole trade to the ground, Nanasika proclaims. And people walking out of there talking about, uh, I learned about slavery. It was in there. Hold on. You don't have to stop there. You can listen here. This is according to Box Office Mo Mojo by IMDb Pro. Fighting for their kingdom of the homie against rival tribes and European slave traders. We're still knee deep in the current box office slump with five weeks up left until Hall Halloween ends carries us all out onto it. However, after a better than expected $42.3 million box office last weekend, uh, a 24% drop and solid buzz, solid buzz. They ain't gonna talk about this boycott. 
They don't need us to understand the power of our boycott. We're going to spin it and spin it again and tell them some nonsense. I'll clear it up. On the weekends, the woman came. And the next weekend's uh, Don't Worry Darling, it looks like they're maybe uh, able to weather the storm. The biggest release this weekend, Sony's TriStar's Woman King. Understand, it's the only release this weekend. There was one other movie. I'll go through it in a second. And it made all this movie money back that weekend. It was made for a million dollars. No marketing. Woman King was the only movie to hit all 3,700 theaters last weekend. Of course, it's going to be number one. They shouldn't, I mean, for it to proclaim itself number one in a race by itself, it don't even make sense. Which should open in the mid teens from 3,700 theaters, including IMAX and other premium large format screens, to become the best debut since uh, Dragon Ball Superhero, which is a cartoon four weeks ago. The Gino Brightwood directorial can be described as Braveheart meets Black Panther. Where did you hear Braveheart before? Who is pushing the theme of this movie? I was watching Braveheart is what Maria Bello, the woman who has no writing credits other than this movie on IMDb, the white woman that I showed a second ago, said, and now it's in the actual promotion. It is Braveheart meets Black Panther. I need you guys to see this nonsense. I told y'all black women is driving this boycott. Now we got the men too, because this is about lineage, but don't make this about no massage and aware, because there's no place for that here. Shout out to my sisters. I need you. Um, and also for those people that are saying uh, 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 whether if yours might say Nigeria now, because I believe what they did is they, you got to understand, Nigeria took some, I believe, of Benin. It's all right next to each other. So don't, don't, don't think that you still don't come right from the same stuff, the same whole set of, uh, of slave trading. Because they, they switched it up where they started calling it more Nigerian than Benin. Can we talk about it? And your ancestry.com is what I'm talking about. In the film, Nanasika confronts Gezo about the immorality of selling black slaves to the Portuguese and suggests trading in palm oil production instead. While this conversation is fictional, again, this is IMDb, it is based on the historic fact that Agoji favored trading palm oil with the Europeans between 1840 and 1870. I will show you in a second from the dissertation. Shout out to the brother that wrote it, and we'll go through that. How palm oil required massive amounts of slaves to produce and transport. So they just went from selling slaves to owning slaves and treat them just as horrendous, if not worse. But they left all that out of the movie. They just talked about palm oil and left it to you. And you think about like labor unions and, and machines and trucks driving them. No, these people carry 50 pounds of palm oil, uh, 60 miles on the, on the top of their head by foot. The slaves, your ancestors. But they covered it, though. They they tone, they they. They, they they did that. They showed them. They showed the slavery. I don't know why you mad, Tom. It should be, good name. It should enrage you that they made a movie so historically inaccurate, threw it at you like, like uh, Toss Salad, started making arguments about massaging the wear, then moved to this whole uh, messed up reality of like, it's a fiction, so we got to make it fictional. Somebody said it's crazy that Lupita rejected the movie, but Viola decided to do it. <sighs> Is it? People celebrating this ahistorical nonsense, even after basic facts are, are, are explained, having no lineal anchoring. They're explained because they have no lineal anchoring. The true story behind the woman came for those people that want to know. In the woman king, Nanatika experiences firsthand the horrors of the sla of slavery and works to convince King Gazo to stop participating in, this, in the slave trade. That's how they sold it to you. And that's why people are walking out of there and they're like, well, why you boycott? <laughs> you're so fucking stupid. Like, I, I literally, you know, I, I hate to call people stupid, but you're so fucking stupid. Like, they're, they're you're so stupid. Like, they're, they're literally thinking that what they watched was like a historically relatively accurate portrayal. They have no idea that what they watched is just all just 
made up truths. So then they don't know like what we're even talking about. And once somebody is that bad off, you got to decide whether you can be around them. But they're telling us anything. The Woman King slays with 19 million. The Woman King leads. Again, the only movie, 3,700 theaters. The Woman King reigns. The Woman King looks for long box office run. All of this. 50 million US dollars. Box office analysts expect the Woman King will easily recoup its $50 million production budget. It has the potential to expand to a broader audience as word of mouth spreads. Hmm. Wait, let me finish it. Much like Paramount and Skydance's Top Gun Maverick. So what they do now is, is that in the in the trades, they compare it to Black Panther. We just seen that, but Black Panther meets Braveheart. Or they compare it to Top Gun. And then when we compare the numbers, they say, oh, you can't compare it to Top Gun. To make studios like to make look, let me give you context. When they made uh Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, they did a great article on it so many years ago. This is like 12 years ago, 15 years ago. I read it in the Wall Street Journal. And they compared it to Toy Story. Willy Wonka had made, I think, two billion worldwide. I think it was something like that, some crazy number. And they considered it a failure. Understand that the budget probably was 200 million. Because it didn't sell no sheets and toys and everything else. The studios are not trying to make a one-time multiplier. See, they looked at Toy Story and they made the two billion in the box office. Then they made another two billion in toys and sheets and bed sheets and wallpaper. Studios are not in the business to break even. And this movie at $50 million in budget and 20 to 25 in PA is on the road not to even break even. It is an epic failure. I need you to see it because people are going to try to tell you that don't know nothing, but I'll show it to you. Don't trip. So we just, they compared it right here to uh, Top Gun. It's an action movie made for $50 million by Sony. I don't want to hear no, no more excuses. But when you look at Top Gun, I want you to understand on its first Friday, it made, and understand, Woman King had a Thursday and then led into a Friday. It had a whole extra day. It made 52 million. It was at 90 million by the end of Saturday. It was at 126 for the weekend, for that opening weekend. This is domestic. Sheesh. The, by the time it came around to to uh, Tuesday, it was at 176. It was let's say by the end of Wednesday, this movie was at 176 million dollars. Let's look over at the Woman King. Since they told us it's a success, it made 19 million over the weekend. It is at it is trying to scrape by at 23 million dollars. Last uh, on Wednesday, it made 355 dollars a screen. So what does that mean? You have a screen in the theater. They run it about four times. You divide that by four, it's making 100 dollars a showing. Don't let them tell you that tone ain't here. I'm a problem. They're making a hundred dollars a show. Let's look at, at this movie, because they told me not to use Woman King, uh, uh, Black Panther, because that's Marvel connected. On that Wednesday, it made three thousand dollars a screen. Jesus. So instead of a hundred dollars a show, they're making a thousand a show. I just need you guys to see it. So Top Gun is making a thousand a show. When they show it four times about starting at like four or five o'clock. And then Woman King is making a uh, hundred dollars a show. Let's have four tickets, three tickets, three people in there. They told us about the, the A plus score, but they didn't tell us about the IMDB users review. Huh. But when you look at the most recent IMDB user review, it is 37.8% gave it a one. Another 5% gave it a 2. Yeah, you got 10s in there, 2,300. But you got 42% of the audience at a 1 or 2, nearly 50% at a 4 or below, with the bulk at the 1. None of the rags covered that. 
not the rap, not a variety, not Holly, but they told us about the A plus score. The reason why you gotta understand is that everybody's interest because they need this stuff to work so Sony can keep making movies because their business is based on there being movies as well. The IMDB biggest strength is that its score gives you a good idea of what normal consumers think of it. Professional critics have no influence on IMDB scores. This is the IMDB score, 6.1 with 37.6% at 1. I need you to see it. Shout out. Again, my sisters are driving this boycott. My brothers is coming along too. We not here for no massage in the wear. They shook. They watching us right now. They quiet. 310-388-3499 if you want to let your voice be heard. They didn't expect to see y'all in here supporting at 1130 on a, on a Friday. They wanted to see a bunch of black males in here ranting, but we're not here for a, a gender discussion. We are here to protect our lineage. Can we talk? Can we think, think about it? Let's get through this. Many are struggling with seeing African Americans in the context of lineage versus blackness. Being ADOS versus being African. That's not being oppositional, it's just being honest. I wouldn't bet that 95, if not 98% of ADOS, especially those that are not half African of some sort due to a parent, have never been to Africa and will never go. Any part of the continent. They also have created our identity in the context of people's careers. So we got to go see the movie because Viola in it. Wait, 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 wait. It is a movie about the people that traded us into slavery for and, and, and create, committed atrocities in killing our ancestors, unlike anything we've seen. But we got to see it because Viola in it. If we don't do that, ain't going to be no more roles, no more acting roles. Well, if this is the acting role, I don't want no more roles. With the boycott, we're having people with basic inference skills would not bring up whether people get more acting roles. Can we talk about it? Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? This is East Texas. Texas. What's up, Ammo? Tell me what you think. Man, I had to call in because this is crazy. You know, they want to, they really want to take us back to flat blackness. Like, that's the goal. Like, they, 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 they feel threatened because they keep putting out lies and propaganda and they just want to take us back and we're just not going for it. And I was up today and I was watching a video and, and, and you're the expert in movies, but I'm just going to throw this out there and I was watching this video about old movies. There was a movie in 1990 called Total Recall. Remember that movie? Hey, you got to keep it brief because I got a lot to get to. I'm not going to have time for Total Recall right now, but just what you think about the movie. I apologize. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, get I, I got a lot yeah, of talk show yeah, to get to. Yeah, I thought the movie, I, well, I thought the movie was trash, but what I was basically saying was they made movies in the 90s that cost $50 million that crossed more than this Come on. In 90s money. Come on. And, and they made this movie at $50 million today and it couldn't even break half. So I think that it's just, it's just ad propaganda straight up and down. And I think that not only should we boycott this movie, but we should boycott every movie that they put out that even can't that disrespect because there's a lot of disrespect going on. And they're using our fathers and celebrities to push the disrespect. And it, it, it is so foul and distasteful. And I am extremely, just like Chris and Six said, I, I'm just enraged by it. I mean, it All right, look, 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 look. Since you're here, since you're here, I want you to just stay on call. And I'm, we're gonna play. We're gonna play a clip. I want you to stay on call. Actually, I, I can't do it that way because you got to hear the clip. Caller, thank you so much for calling. I want you. I want you to listen to this clip and then comment in the chat what you think about the clip. Because I'm about to play it right now. Some of you guys have seen it already. It's from the History Channel. But we're going to get to it. Thank you, caller. Woo, man. Because I want to get to everything. I want y'all to see this. Between the 16th and 19th centuries, around 12 million Africans crossed the Atlantic into slavery. It is the largest ever long-distance forced migration. Appalled by the cruelties of the Europeans, the visitors become curious as to how Africans fell into their hands. 
so they ask their guide. This part of our history is difficult to tell and hard to believe. There were intertribal wars. Those uh, stronger tribes were raiding the weaker ones, capturing them, selling them to the African dealers who brought them here and sold them out. All the tribes were involved in the slave trade. No exemption. This was what they called the Slave Coast. Just 10 years after Columbus crossed the Atlantic, the Spanish landed the first African slaves in the New World. Over the next three centuries, the trade spread along the shoreline of West Africa as European demand extended from gold and ivory to human beings. The Europeans protected their interests with fortified trading posts along the African coast. Almost without exception, the forts were constructed with the agreement and often at the request of the local African rulers. The Europeans paid them ground rent. There were even treaties between the two sides in which African rulers, signing with crosses, granted monopoly trading rights to one European country while shutting out the rest. In release, it was simply trade, trading with people who want our gold or who want our slaves, and we want their guns, their um, gin, their, their rum, and their cloth, and so on. Some owners were kinder than others, but the principle was always the same. And it's glove, it and it's glove. Woo! So this is what we dealing with. We dealing with people that don't understand that this is real and that they don't change history itself. Let's talk about the people that we dealing with. Despite the con the controversy, uh, these are all tweets, all tweets that I took down, and you can take Twitter tweets and put them up on YouTube. You shouldn't have tweeted it. Despite the controversy, Woman King was probably the best movie I've ever seen. Period. I have never seen be a woman take take it so seriously in a the movie. They tend to always be some kind of joke. The best movies you ever seen. A uh, movie built on entire uh, ahistorical facts. Currently in the theater, bawling my eyes out watching Woman King. This is a dream. A movie where Nana Sika, who beheaded your ancestors, instead is a freedom fighter. You bawling your eyes out at Viola Davis. Just saw Woman King, amazing movie. Great performance from Viola. Can we talk about it? My friends told me the movie is excellent. Understand that everybody talking about uh, performance, not not nothing else. They ain't talking about the writing or nothing else. They just talking about the performance and I guess the costumes. Woman King was everything. I cried tears of sorrow and joy. Everything was phenomenally executed. By what expertise do you have to say what is phenomenally executed? I, did they execute the history in the script? If a person, and there's two writers, but one of them is, is Bello and there's another white woman that wrote. But Bello has no writing credits. How can a person that has no writing credits execute phenomenally? Is it possible? One in a million shot yet, but this ain't the story for that. You are not a warrior until you kill your tears. Woman King, Black Girls Rock. In them. This movie was inspirational, emotional, powerful, and historical. A movie that changes the Dahomey from slave traders to emancipators says that they traded palm oil, doesn't make clear that palm oil is actually just owning slaves at a massive scale. I mean, like literally, when you I'll show you the math, but to make the amount of palm oil that they traded, you would have to have about 500,000 people working as palm oil slaves. 500,000. And they just showed them as just making palm oil like they're doing it with machines. See it twice. They was effing those men up. Can we talk about Woman King and how everybody acted they A's off? Even the king's wife. What are we talking about? But this is the kind of uh, patriarchal, paternal, 
nonsense that they actually exude, then they get mad when you actually respond. Listen to this. This is a YouTuber comment. Did you have a problem with the movie Amistad? Who bring her understanding of movies about slavery starts with Amistad, produced by Steven Spielberg. Did you have a problem with that? By the way, the movie The Woman King was directed by Gina Prince Blythewood, Love and Basketball. Okay. Please do your research. The Homie Tribe was all, has always been there. You are probably just finding out about this history through this movie. My response, what does he even say? You talking paternalistic nonsense. My piece in 2018. Benin, a country of 4.7 million people, was called the Homie in the 17th century when it was a major supplier of slaves. I wrote that in 2018. This woman is just talking and used to talking to somebody else. I ain't the one. Got me all the way messed up. Shout out to my sisters. I need us to see it because we we, we got to understand. You said I learned about it with this movie, but I'm writing about it in 2018. African Americans are more than just um, uh, Africans in America. The movie did not shy away from that. This is still part of history. Obviously, you did not see the movie. Understand, people that saw the movie are telling us after seeing the movie, they didn't see the movie. Let me say, people after, people that saw the movie are literally telling us they didn't know nothing that was going on and can't even tell us like a, there's no way that you walk out of that movie knowing the basic history of the homie and you don't start off saying that they got the, the story wrong. But they saying that that was part of history. This makes no sense of the reply. You watch the movie and don't know what was in the movie. Can we talk? Just crazy to sit in the movie and not know what happened and the significance nor the way it was totally inaccurate. The story. Another uh, tweet is, thank you. A lot of this is just talking about Boycott Woman King. I've never talked to this woman. I don't know who she is. She's saying what it is, and I've never talked to her. Maybe one of you guys have. A lot of this is just veiled massage the wear. People really hate to see dark-skinned women have a platform other than many roles and struggle love roles. I saw the film. It does not whitewash what was happening between these African tribes. She was in the movie and didn't even see the movie. But listen to this by Yvette Carnell, who, who's also with me on this. Shout out to Yvette in 2020. This, talking about Viola on the cover of her Vanity Fair when she was doing my rainy. The rich, dark brown beauty of Viola's skin in this photo aesthetic. They're just saying anything because they don't know how to argue. They don't know how to debate. They don't have inference skills. They don't have comprehension skills. And largely, they just don't understand basics. What we're seeing right now is, in part, an ethnic group is anchored in ancestry. ADOS may be in large part outside of the people that we've socialized and talked to for years now, not anchored in ancestry. So then it's not really a, <clears throat> an ethnic group. And that's why the, you're, uh, you're having the kind of basic discussions and arguments with people is they're not anchored in their own ancestors. They're just kind of looking at things through career or gender. That's not enough, though. That's not like how you live and move, especially in a highly... Uh, ethnically like uh, divided and broken down country like America. It's like these people are, are just unhooked from the basic things that make a person a full functional person in a society. And that's kind of what you're seeing. Cause like you, you should be able to tell them that the homie are, traded their families into slavery and they get it and they become frustrated, but their reaction is actually inverted because they see themselves as more the homie than slave. Let me say that again. They see themselves through the Viola character that's fictional because they can't accept that they actually come from the slave. And part of the reason is that they didn't show the slave. So they didn't show the Viola character owning the slave. They just, they just showed her as a freedom fighter. So then that's who they are in their head. Let's talk about it. There's a lot going on. Let me see if I can get a caller back. Woo-wee. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? What do you think about this massage and aware comment 
uh, where she says basically that we have a problem with dark skinned women having a platform. I, I have no idea what she's talking about. But what do you think about that argument? Okay, first of all, my name is Farmer. I'm calling her Farmer Lewis And this is what I think. I think they're trying to play upon the black women's emotions, and they're trying to uh, appeal to our great sensibility in the fact that we're black and we're female. But they're trying to say, oh, well, you know, they didn't spoke to you guys because they're trying to say that you don't have what it takes to and so it's a shame that every time you get a platform and you're up and everybody's able to see you, your sign that overshadows who. That's what it is. I agree. I understand where you're coming from. Well, let me tell you about what I think about this. When I go for Maria Bella, I want her to hear me because I'm one of those sisters who is out here rooting the roof for your movie to be removed from me theater. And I, when I get a day off, I'm a nurse. When I get a day off, I'm going to take my black ass down to the theater with my picket sign. Because I want it removed. I want it out. You don't get to dictate our history to us. You don't get to redefine our message. You don't get to speak for us. You don't get to demasculate or emasculate our men. You don't get to decide what goes on in our community. You just don't. Fall back, lady. Come on, sister. Jesus. Can I let you go on? Oh, all oh, the way back. Let me let me ask you one other thing. Do you, not, you do, don't even know? Do you, you don't even understand the power of our community? This is ain't those and we ain't safe. We come forward. Thank you so much for calling. Thank you. All right. She came through with the fire and and the and the, and the ice and and everything in between and what we needed to hear because this ain't nothing to do with no massage and aware. Uh, they don't have no other discussions. Like this is about lineage. What we talking about? But they got the costumes, y'all. They got the costumes together. Woman King, Nanasika cosplay costume. People that traded you into slavery. They done made costumes out of their outfits. But understand, when it came to wearing Nazi costumes, this Comic-Con shut that down. It should be banned where it can be. We have seen it done with Nazi costumes. Rose City Comic-Con founder Ron Rister made an important clarification to the policy. Nazi costumes are 100% banned all the time. But if you see yourself as the homie, you don't want it banned because you want to wear it at this Halloween. Who are the Dahomians? Thrived off slavery. King Gezo, strong military, used power to get rich on slave trade. Part of the reason this isn't resonating as it should is first, there is no video and we now learn visually. And also we don't grasp, meaning there's no video of the 1800s, of the late 1800s to show this so you can just see it. And we now learn visually and we also don't grasp the scale. Next time you are at a packed NFL stadium, look around. Imagine all those people enslaved in one place, multiply that by $200. The woman king, the homie trade, traded about 3 million of our ancestors, but other countries and their progeny have been able to live on a flat blackness that black Americans have blindly anchored. All of this was the slave coast, this whole half circle here. There were still were 9 million more sold up the uh, African coast for hundreds of years. Come on. Whew. Can we talk about it? Can we talk about it? Lupita Nyong'o was brought to a role in this movie. She dropped out. People are saying that this video kind of frames part of her. She's talking about the agoji, the same agoji that's in this movie and her awareness of being awake. Lupita Nyong'o left the project of making a short documentary on the agoji Amazons for Smithsonian Channel. She cried after interviewing the granddaughter of a Yoruba woman they trafficked. Lupita isn't a descendant so, so basically, then this woman says, I love, this is the vacuousness. I love that Lupita decided she could not be in Woman King for very good reasons. Okay, that's good. And then instead of trying to destroy the project, meaning that what Boycott Woman King is about destroying a project, you don't understand lineage. It's sad that you never got anchored. 
you don't understand ancestry, which means you don't understand the basic tenets of peoplehood, of ethnicity. This move, this is not about destroying a project. And, and as that woman just called before, those people that feel they want this project taken out, they, taken out of the theaters, when you're talking about people whose families were enslaved for hundreds of years, beheaded, atrocities unmatched, sacrificed, they have every right to want this out of theaters. There is room for all projects. History should be learned. There's no history in the movie because the movie makes up history. How are you this dense? Lupita isn't a descendant of the transatlantic slave trade. She's Kenyan, so her reaction isn't the same as those who have ancestral victims. How are you this dense? Of course she's not going to react the way we do. Do you even understand that Africa isn't a country? No, you don't. You don't understand that Africa is a continent and Kenya is over here and Benin is over here. It's just like talking to, I did this map to explain how little she, meaning Lupita, has to do with this discussion linearly. The distance from Kenya to Benin is 2,500 miles, just about the width of the United States. And there are no mass roads connecting as that there are five to eight countries separating. How you don't understand this? A obscure and number two, an obscure documentary has no relativity with a, a historical film in 3,700 theaters. But we wore these Wakanda costumes. Then when I made an argument, both in 2019 and also just about a month and a half ago, that this is tied to the Black Panther, all y'all pushed back. Not all y'all, but like a chunk just didn't even understand. But Lupita said it because it's the truth. It's just like, how do you guys don't understand the basics of the discussion? Like. A, B, C, D, E, F. I traveled to Benin to make a documentary on the warrior woman of the Dahomey Kingdom. They're arguably the world's greatest female army and helped inspire Black Panther's Dora Milaje. But you had Ida Bay Wells, who's supposed to know about this subject matter, supposed to, say, I'm not talking about Black Panther, bro. I'm talking about the Woman King, which is a biopic. Real story, real events. I said Dahomey, not Wakanda. You're always trying to escape, trying to avoid the discussion, the hard part. <sighs> Which were inspired, helped inspire Black Panther's Dora Milaje. Can we talk? You can make an argument that despite not being able to measure financially, the impact our boycott woman king push is of our boycott women king push is among the most clear uses of boycott discussions by black america to send a message to hollywood in our lifetime we are a people again that's the rap article the atrocities that were done have to be understood for you to have context i want to play another short video before i go to another call so you can see that In cultures where human sacrifice was common, being a slave could be fatal. One king executed two each morning in gratitude for a good night's sleep. Another decorated his palace walls with their severed heads. Here, 127 slaves are being beheaded to fill a gap. A woman slave crucified to try and stop the rain. And if cruelty to slaves was nothing new, neither was exporting them. Let's take another caller. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, this is Joshua calling from East Texas. I had to call in again after I saw that video. And I just want to let you know that I think the movie is disgusting. And I know that it's real hard for you to be like the spokesperson and the front man for all of this, and I know it's a sacrifice, but I want to let you know we appreciate you because nobody else is saying it. Nobody else is saying it. All of our organizations have abandoned us or, or sold us out. So we really appreciate you out here. Thank you, man. Thank you, bro. Because uh, this is a lot. I just, I just had to put that out there. Thank you, bro. And, 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 and you, could be, you could be doing a little stuff, and you out here informing us, so we appreciate you. 
Yeah, it's a lot. You know, I was up till like 2 a.m. reading that. Uh, what I'm gonna read to you in a second, because it's, it, it, I think that one of the hustles is even the lie about palm oil. So they basically just leave it like you think that palm oil, you think when they free the slaves in the movie, for those people, that that means like when we was free. No, 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 no. Even though we had Jim Crow, but we started with a reconstruction era. No, then people didn't go back to their villages. They produced palm oil right. from their very blood. They carry right. palm oil 50 pounds on the top of their heads for 60 miles. You ain't got to, hold on, let me read it to you because I want, since you're here, you're going to get that. Let me read it to you. One second. One second. Let me read this to you. I, I want I, I want to make sure that we get it all in. Let me read this to you since you're here. Thank you for coming on. I'm gonna give this to you. This is a this is a this is a, this is a dissertation by John Reed back in 1986. Uh, the political effects of the transition from the slave trade to palm oil commerce in the 19th century. Hey, caller, I'm going to uh, mute you so that I can talk to you, but you're still online. Uh, the political effects of the transition from the slave trade to palm oil commerce in the 19th century kingdom of Dahomey. Manning, basing his assertions on Rankle and Adam, suggests 140 work days to harvest and transport the fruit. The reason why this is important is because they're telling us that they stopped selling slaves and that they made palm oil instead. But they don't show the slaves. They don't show the scale of it. They don't show that they just were slavers then. So then it don't make no sense. And then the people that walk out have no idea. They think that, I guess they think the palm oil just fell out of the sky or just fell off a tree. 90 work days for removal of the fruit from the bunches. 85 days for the cooking of the fruit, preparing and purifying the oil, including procuring and transporting the water and wood. A total of 315 man, 15 man days to produce one ton of oil. This figure confirms the suggestion by 19th century sources that a slave could produce one ton of, po of palm oil a year. Thus, assuming relatively easy access to water and wood, the production of one ton of oil in the area of Abomey and its transportation to the coast for a change would have involved a minimum labor days of 735 man days. Since the production season was confined to approximately half the year, the labor input required was doubled. Given this, the difficulties of producing and transporting oil in the Dahomeyan rainy season and allowing for losses in route, it is likely that the process of production and transportation of a ton of oil from the Abomey region demanded the full-time employment of four slaves in terms of direct labor. In addition, food production for the slaves thus employed would involve the allocation of additional labor. Thus, the production of even 2,000 tons of oil from the Abomey region would have involved directly and indirectly somewhere in the region of 10,000 slaves. Full time during the six month season. In the light of these figures, some further comments can be made on relatively profitable on figures supplied by Forbes around mid-century and Burton in 1960. The figures are by their nature tentative, but must be illustrated. I wanna read one more section to you, caller. I'm gonna come right to you. A return journey from Abomey to Wida fully laden with palm oil on the first leg of the journey and perhaps carrying manufactured goods, powder, guns, spirits, or calories on the return could not have been completed in the 19th century in less than a week, particularly bearing in mind the nature of the terrain on the route between Abomey and Wida and the fact that the transportation of the bulk of the, of the palm oil would have taken place during the rainy season. I want to make sure that everybody understands what we're talking about. We're talking about this right here. We're talking about 57 miles. And it's, it's all jungle, 57 miles. These people are walking with palm oil on their head, 50 pounds of it. Let me read a little more, and I'm going to come right to the caller. Calculations regarding the actual production of the pear cap oil are slightly more problematical in the absence of any precise data from the Dahomeyan coast. But one early 20th century estimate for West Africa is generally suggests a potential oil yield of 18% of the fruit gathered, with about 30 to 50% of the potential being realized by traditional native methods of extraction. A contemporary report from uh, Gabon in the early 1880s referring, let me go back to this, 
to an extraction process similar to that generally employed in Dahomey suggests that the actual yield of oil may have been a higher up. What is clear, however, is the process was time consuming and labor intensive. Time consuming and labor intensive. Slaves. Apart from the labor involved in the actual production process, the preliminaries of, of gathering the fruit, water, and wood necessarily involve considerable expenditure in terms of labor time. Several secondary works refer to the transportation of the palm oil. Listen to this, caller, because I'm coming right to you. Produ produced from a far as far inland as a bomi by the king of Dahomey. According to these works, the king became uh, of his political power, was able to employ legions of slaves transporting huge amounts of palm oil. We're talking about like hundreds of thousands of slaves walking back and forth with pounds and pounds of palm oil on their head. That is better than being sold into slavery. That's the alternative that they don't show in the movie. In Dahomey, the normal oil load for a head carrier appears to have been five gallons and to have uh, remained roughly the same throughout our period. In the closing decades of the 18th century, Norris indicated that palm oil was brought to Wida, marked in, cal uh, in uh, calabashes of from five to 10 or 12 gallons. Later in the mid 19th century, Forbes uh, female run carriers were allocated five gallons each as their load on the way to Abomey. Five gallons earthen jar jars appear to have been the normal size receptacles employed by the homies for storage of newly produced oil prior to use or carriage in the 1870s. The normal carriage weight of a slave porter therefore appears to have been about 35 pounds of oil plus the weight of the container, probably around 50 pounds in total. Caller, what do you think about that? Right. These, these people were atrocious. And what's even more atrocious is the people that are trying to sell them to us as some form of liberator. It is disgusting. And and I'll say this and I'll get out. If you're not angry about this liberty and about the, the portrayal of slave traders, you're either stupid or you're not Adolf. But it's one or the other because it is just horrific. And I'll say that we appreciate you talking Wait, 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 wait. One last thing. So John Boyoga plays this King of Gazo. In the movie, they show him just basically she become his queen. Spoiler alert: women king, and then they just they rule over all these slaves, but they don't show us the slaves or no recollection of like how the slaves. They just are, are king and queen over hundreds of thousands of your ancestors. But then they also show him free the slaves, but they don't show this part. When King Gezo, the great slave king of Dahomey, died in 1858, some 800 slaves were massacred. What do you think about that? And, 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 and Jesus Christ, like, the, like that is that is the part that is the most important and is the most infuriating. The the ones that didn't make the trip across the Atlantic just got slaughtered and threw in a ditch with, with, a, with a king, and they were doing this for hundreds of years. And we're supposed to cheer and celebrate these people. I mean, I it is it is being infuriating, and I'm disgusting, and I think this whole movie. Not only should be taken out of every theater, but everybody involved should be ostracized. Everyone. Thank you so much. Whew, man, so we got this. The creator of one king set up palm oil like next free king freedom. That's the way they did it. About the 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 the, the split. Like they moved from trading to the palm oil. No, they were slavers making two thousand tons. Took ten thousand slaves. The homey palm oil production was done by our enslaved ancestors. They slaved in making and carrying 40 pounds of it, 60 miles on their head. Boycott Woman King. Can we talk about it? We got the director saying all kinds of stuff. I'm going to read some of her quotes because I have no idea what she's saying. How the Woman King confronts Africa's role in the slave trade. Gina Prince Blywood. Uh, understand, Blywood. understand, we're not here for Maria Bello, though. Maria Bello helped write the script, came up with the concept, but we're hearing from the light, uh, the black director. Sound like cover to me. It wasn't intimidation, I think, because historical epics are some of my favorite films. You know Braveheart. Where did we hear Braveheart again? Let's go back to where we heard Braveheart. I want to make sure that we connect the dots. I know we've been over a lot, but we heard Braveheart here. I was watching Braveheart and I was like, she said I was watching Braveheart with this director that come much later. So you got that Braveheart from this Maria Bello, but now you doing the interview because they don't want to have her 
interviewed and everybody to react. You know, Braveheart, I've watched it a hundred times. I love that film. Last of Mohicans, Gladiator, these films are set in a true time in history. And yet there is some intentiveness in terms of characters and your ability to tell personal stories within that. So I knew going in the balance that I wanted to have and the confidence in that and the excitement of being able to tell a story of the kingdom. Like that's an extra thing to know. She's talking like she wrote the script. She directed the movie. Listen to this. David and Goliath battle that they had was real and the stakes were real and the reason for it was real and this kingdom was real and the politics and gender politics were real. No, they elevated these women to warriors, which meant that they had a whole different gender structure. So I, I have no idea what you're saying. I guess I looked at it as I knew we were doing something that hadn't been done before. And that was an exciting as an artist to be able to uh, to do that. And I, I knew because of that and who was fronting this movie and who were here in the movie, I feel like I was more I had more pressure. And I'm saying self-imposed pressure on getting it right, getting it right. I needed to... I needed people to be able to go to this movie and just be enthralled. So then you change the story. The writer makes the Dahomey into emancipators, enthralled. Let me get back to where I was at. Uh, by these warriors. When I started watching it, we were cutting together and the smiles I found myself doing when I'm just looking up at the screen and seeing these characters. Oh, we did this and I get to watch this. Bro, it was knowledge of that at the time we're setting that the kingdom was at a crossroads in a legit crossroads. It wasn't at a crossroads in the context that is being shown. It moved from slave trading to keeping on slave trading, trying to get through the blockades and keeping slaves to make palm oil. And legit crossroads of half of this kingdom and his people wanted to abolish, abolish, being a part of the trade. Listen to the words. And the other half wanted to keep it because it gave them their wealth. And being able to use these women as that voice of wanting to change. And so being able to deal with this, yes, and they did this, And but there was a fight and a young King Gezo was in the middle of this trying to decide which way to go and ultimately deciding to go against it, bro. It's a historical. Knowing that with that could affect his reign, which you know, for me personally, I'd find heroic in that none of this is accurate, bro. This is not the history. Absolutely, they had the potential. Ultimately, did go to palm oil production, their main source of income. Did it happen specifically with Anasika? Not is an uh, amalgamation of a number of different uh, people, but that is the direction that they ultimately went to. Now, they went to being slave owners. Let's say it for a second. They moved from being slave traders to just using slaves and being slave owners. And their product that they made from those slaves, those same slaves, was palm oil. Hundreds of thousands of people. Let me take another caller. She said, we had to be truthful. That was our last line. And the box put that out. It don't make no sense. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? This is my, I'm calling from Boston, HOS Boston. Okay, tell me what you think about this. What do you think about Blythewood saying what she said? She said, all of that, but I don't even, uh, bro. She, what do you think about it? What I think of what what she said? Yeah, what the director said. What what I just read. I mean, she basically said that. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. I can't believe the movie was made. Come on. I can't keep it got green light. And I spent my vacation week for work. Um, beat it, Saudi. Boycott. And I just wanted to say, I wanted to say, do moves, we move. So. Thank you. Can yeah, I read, can right. I read can I read one more thing to you? This is what else she said. She yeah. said uh, when they were first scrambling initially, they trying to get they they they, they message together. In my view, I said the gravity of the That's atrocities crazy. the gravity of the atrocities skipped over by Women King can't be put into words. The boycott Women King protest should be an awakening for Adolf's Black Americans as to the gaps in their own identity. I put that up with the original video, the first little clip I showed, but her. Her actual message in the Variety article, to, as I understand it, was the biggest eye-opener. This is the director of The Woman King, black director. The biggest eye-opener was how much misinformation there is about these women and this culture. 
given that so much of their history was written from the colonizers. Look, if you don't want to make the movie because you don't believe the history happened, that's fine. I don't think people understand. I'm going to you know, I'm gonna put you on mute. I'm going to come right to you because I want to hear one, play one last clip because I want you to respond right after the clip. I don't think people understand the, the, the reality of what we're talking about. She's talking like we're talking about 1700. By now, we're talking about late 1800. These uh, slave, these uh, tribe, on, tribe, tribe leaders, kings, are putting their children on the slave ship on top of it while they have slaves under it and sending them to England to school. There wasn't no secondary plane to get to England. They're letting their, 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 their children live with slave traders. This is not just a, a partnership that started and ended on the coast of Africa. This is very deep-seated. I don't think that everyone understands, but I'll make y'all understand. Hold on. Let, let, me, let me play one last clip for the day, and then y'all will hear this. Who is the one who lives still? The problem of discrimination today, the reaction is totally different. They are all of a sudden enraged. And it's a cry. It coules the tears. It cries. It gives even the cries. The point on the wall. Alors pour nous pour dire, mais je ne savais pas que les Noirs avaient aussi contribué à cette traite des Noirs. Et je leur dis souvent, oui, il ne faut pas toujours blâmer les Blancs, parce que les Noirs aussi avaient contribué. Et sans la participation de vos frères Noirs, cette traite ne sera pas si facile. Indeed, over time, a relationship grew between Blacks and Whites, brought together by the slave trade. Business partnerships and friendships spanned oceans, linking Africa to both Europe and the New World. These connections were multifaceted, they were multi-layered. And we know the children of merchants in Calabar, the African children of African merchants in Calabar, some of them were educated in, in Bristol, in Liverpool, or even in New York City in the 18th century. They went there as free people, they went there sometimes living in the homes of Liverpool or Bristol slave traders uh, while they were educated. Uh, they learned English. They learned they were literate. Uh, they went back to become merchants themselves in, their, their, in, their, in the towns from where they came from. Think about that. Are you still there? I'm still there. What do you, what do you think about what you just heard? I just, it's just unbelievable <laughs> to come here, educate themselves on the bus. And I, what did I see? I either read it or I heard it about the lady that was doing the business trip and the butler was giving her a passage, a passage to do her business. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. And I just can't believe that they thought that they could do this money grab. Caller, thank you so much for calling in. I mean, thank you for uh, staying on hold, man. It, 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 this is a, a, a somber show because it gives us a place to outlet, but it also allows us to have the discussion. You got Dennis, David Dennis Jr. say the Little Mermaid and the Woman King boycotts may be coming from two different communities, but many of them share something common, a disdain for black women prominently featured anywhere. Again, I started the hashtag boycott Woman King, and I responded to him saying this has nothing to do with gender as the person that started the discussion. I have no dis issue with women displayed prominently among my closest friends, the woman that started hashtag ADOS with me, and now is the president of the ADOS Org Foundation. This is patently ignorant. So people are just saying anything. They just saying anything. That, and, and, and anything normally works. I asked the question, why isn't a Hollywood Reporter interviewing Maria Bello? She she was four weeks ago, August, mid-August, doing the interviews and everything. Now we can't find her. We just getting the, the black director we're not getting the person. We want to know the person that created it from Braveheart, why she did it. We don't want to know about you, director, because you didn't write this. We don't want to know from Viola. You didn't write this. We want to know from the creator that it came from her mind, what made you make this movie and write and rewrite the history. But they can't put her out there. They already know what's going to happen amongst black women if, that, if she gets to talking about how and why she made this movie. Baylo only has one writing credit on IMDb when I went there. Maybe she has something that ain't listed. She only had one. Story by. There's another writer, another white woman also wrote that. She has a few more credits, to be fair. 
But Baylo, who's who this was, she did the interview. It wasn't she didn't do this interview with somebody, she did this interview by herself. The woman king producer Maria Bello says more stories should be told from Kenya. I found many. The woman king was definitely born of my love of the continent in general. It's based on women's history, a story I found many years ago about this army of women in the 17th century. I was watching Braveheart and I was like, why isn't there a woman's movie like this? That is the, the genesis of this movie. It's from a woman who has one writing credit. Just this movie. To give context, Ridley, that wrote The Powerful 12 Years of Slave, has 36 writing credits. Even Nate Parker, who wrote 2016's Birth of the Nation as a newbie of sorts, has 11 credits as of the last time I checked. Having one writing credit and writing Women King film that reflects Black history is a red flag. And people are walking out of that talking about it's the best movie they've ever seen. And again, to be fair, there is a second writer, uh, but also a white woman, and she doesn't have any big epic, epic films in her credits either. This woman had none. People have no idea the film did not do well. Woman King dropped $1,300 a screen. Black Panther did $18,000 a screen, meaning every screen, take all the movies shown throughout the day. And Woman King is number one during a week that it was the only wide opening film. We talked about the beginning and we talked about the IMDb score. People are posting about the theaters that they looked at on Saturday or Sunday. I looked up tickets for the Woman King at theaters, uh, and that the 18th is actually Sunday in Chicago that mostly black people go to, and the ticket it ain't a ticket sold. Smaller theaters still, and this is uh, Friday. I believe the 16th would have been uh, Friday. Smaller theaters still no seats sold if the online seating system is accurate. I don't think more than three seats or three tickets were sold to Woman King all day on two different screens. Feel bad for the cinemas. We need things, these to thrive, not be empty on a Friday. For those people that didn't want me to compare it to Top Gun, they didn't want me to compare it to Black Panther, let me just compare it to the other movie that opened. The other movie that opened, opened and it only had a budget of a million dollars, probably had a $100,000 P&A budget. Helping with Hollywood math. The other movie that opened this past week is Pearl. It was made for a million dollar budget and may have had less than a thousand, a hundred thousand in marketing. It made three times that by Sunday night. For Women King to match it, needs to make around two hundred ten million dollars. For it to just match what it made, understand this movie was made for a million, probably hundred thousand. It made all of its money back uh, uh, by threefold by Sunday. Women King will have to get to two hundred ten million dollars. We can look at uh, Sandra Bullock's The Lost City to kind of get a comparable. Again, $2,700 a, a screen, not $1,300. Can I compare it? So on the days when it when Woman King started getting like $300 a screen, this movie by Sandra Bullock that came out like a few weeks ago, $68 million budget, uh, it was seeing about $1,600 a screen on those $300 days. And then on the days when Woman King was seeing like fifteen hundred, this movie was seeing twenty seven hundred dollars screen. Can I compare it to that at least? I guess I just can't compare it. Two hundred ten million dollars less a nineteen million dollar open. That's just one hundred ninety million more dollars domestically. The impact of Boycott Woman King is not just on opening weekend, which clearly is low at nineteen million for an action film of this size. This boycott will be felt for weeks as there is bad work word of mouth. Let me take another caller. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, how you doing, Tom? This is Trayvon from Baltimore. Tell me your take on it. Get, uh, get, keep it brief, but hit it, hit it hard. Of course, of course. Yeah, man, this is um, it's quite disgusting from all the people who want to maintain or gain access to the machine to uh, pan Africans who have their own ideological bent. It seems like everyone is against us for not hating our taxes. And I feel like this all stems from at least for the people that want to have access and maintain access to the machine. Like, I don't know, maybe it's a piece of medium or the media before this, but I feel like this comes from Hamilton. Like, it's like, it's like a Hamilton effect where we cloak the disgusting history of what was done to us by just, like, hiring a U.S. and, like, black people to absolve those same people that put us in this predicament. Can I read you? Let me it's read like you. Massive social engineering and propaganda. One more, one more tweet I put out was: Don't let anyone use a mediocre nineteen million dollar opening box office to let you, that boycotted Woman King, think you did not trigger a discussion among Hollywood 
on the respect demanded by black American consumers. Because you, I, and everyone that joined this protest did. They know we here now. Give me any last thing you want to say. I want to take one last caller for tonight. Yeah, last thing I want to say is that um, uh, it's very easy for them to clo uh, cloak this movie as the number one movie when there's no competition. This is like coming off of the, the month where everybody is off in August and there's nothing really playing until the fall season is well underway in like October, November. That and also like no one talks about the math behind how a movie makes money. Like no one talks about the marketing which is about the same amount as the production budget. So you have to have at least a hundred million to break even. And you and your box and, 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 and that's uh, not what studios are trying the to do. Weekend is the biggest weekend. And studios are not trying to break you. They're trying to make 10 times multiplier. Caller, thank you so much for calling. I'm going to take one last call. You was powerful. So I'm going to take the last thank caller. You. They trying to, they, John Boyega is trying to slide in and talk about some sequel. Man, you, bro, you don't even know what's going on. They, they, they trying to figure out, like, how to get black people to not wake up and start boycotting. You heard the lady earlier. She said she got her sign ready. I ask that all of you be peaceful. Nonviolence is what I advocate. But I totally understand if you wanted to take signs to theaters and actually boycott on a, on a given Saturday or Friday. That is the level of disrespect I feel about this film. But I understand if you felt that as well. I just ask that you be peaceful. Um, again, we're not trying to have this marred by any kind of uh, violent act or anything of the sort. But this is, I understand what the emotions it, it elicits. Um, I'm going to take the last caller tonight. John Big Boy, you can say he, gonna do, he won't do a sequel. Caller, what's your name? Where you calling from? <laughs> Yeah, no idea what's going on. I go this. I go this. Luke, Yes. Yeah, just call it I'm gonna say thanks for the uh, hashtag. The folks point not. I've been following the whole time. Uh, but I will say, did you see the movie yourself? I watched it just you, to make sure, like, you so, know, so, speak about all the things that you're saying are in the movie. That so many. So, so when it ends. That, uh, let me ask you, because it's interesting, because we're doing a boycott show. Now we have somebody who actually seen it. So do they ever show the, the homie owning slaves and like beating on slaves and, and doing the things that we know went right along with mass slave holding? Nah, they don't show them. Like they show the other tribe, the Oyo. Like they're the ones. This is awful. They show. Yeah, this is plain. Always awful. like trading the slaves. And then, Even and then, the Portuguese and, do come to the village. And one other question. And, one other question. Know, one other yeah. question. I'm sorry for cutting you off because it's a little delay. Do they show that the palm oil will be made by slaves? Like, like, or they just say palm oil and then it's just like that's the end, and then everybody leaves clapping. They never really say it's slaves. Like they kind of try to make it like this, like you know, some farms. They never address the these people doing the actual labor are slaves. Yeah, man, this is ridiculous, man. Let me say this because I want to get out of here, man. Thank you so much for your support, bro. I saw you in the uh, chat, man. This, this show, this movie, this moment. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep up your boycott. You need to be talking to your family and figure out how you're gonna move forward if they want to watch this movie, despite it having slave traders in it and being entirely inaccurate in many aspects. Uh, and you got to figure out how you're going to move forward because you can't have them kind of soldiers in your camp. Uh, for me, you know, I'm going to keep pushing the boycott uh, Woman King hashtag because I believe that this is this is an awful disrespect. And again, I'll say it. I believe that Woman King is among the most d disrespectful movies to black Americans in 40 to 50 years. Thank you.